That's not hardcore enough. Even though I haven't been watching, I don't even know if it's still on, but <laughs> what was it? Like uh this is how it is now, some shit like this. But um Yeah, so that's not cool. Then you have this brother Marcus, or young Marcus. Another plant that they just act like uh they saw the guy on the street. But everything is scripted with these guys. So make no mistake about that. Then you got Royale. Remember that guy? Then he ended up uh, shitting on him doing his own platform. But he didn't get too much uh, shine with that. He had his own hats. Everybody's trying to do their own thing. That's another thing, too. That's what this whole thing is about. Getting people to fly on their own. Royale. <laughs> the problem with him, like I said, they do the test runs to see, you know, if, if these people can rock the house. Royale, he kept lying, making a lot of mistakes. So they had to dismiss the guy. He, he wasn't influential enough. So he didn't make the cut. Then you had Garfield, the Jamaican. He's a new scam artist. Uh, when people can't answer questions. You know what that's all about. I, I assume they pay uh, Sonetta for their infomercials on Wednesdays to scan the people because they're using his platform. Then you got the poppy, Ron Savage, Africa, Ben Bada shit. Knew that shit was fake from the beginning. I kept saying it was because it came out of nowhere. Yeah, I, I had uh, heard about the Ben Bada stabbing a guy after sucking on his penis and the guy revived himself and then he stabbed Ben Bada. Heard that years before this Ron Savage thing came, popped off, but all of a sudden, they attacked Bambada, and it was just these guys. Yeah, Bambada got on Channel 5 and everything, but all that stuff popped off, and nothing became of it. Ron Savage had a name. Matter of fact, if I was listening to the Busy Bee Old School song, I'm from the old, old, old school. Then he said, he said he gave a shout-out to the Bee Stinger on that one. So you can look that one up. So, he, so this Ron Savage was down with the situation, but... Ron Savage was obviously a homosexual, and this poppy, <laughs> this guy's supposed to be a killer. Always thought, I'm gonna kill you. I mean, <laughs> this shit is uh, like a comical cartoon, man. Man got tons of bodies in the street, but he's walking uh, free. If he does have tons of bodies in the street and he's free, how did that happen? Uh, I think we can. Uh, Put two and two together with the Bambada situation. And we can get an idea how it did happen. Now he's beefing with Sarnetta. Which I believe is a f another fake beef. Just so Poppy's uh, Asan Campbell. So he can get his own channel up. And get his own AdSense money. And his own donations uh, popping. So you know that that's uh, a whole part of this scheme. You know, they, they faked the beast, polite, the same thing before he got his uh, YouTube channel up. They had the beef to promote it. Same thing with the Tommy Sotomayor. They all intertwine all this in because Tommy Sotomayor gets more hits than all of them. Uh, so what they do is they, they have these fake beasts so everybody's channel can get their numbers up. That's what this is all about. See... If you want something real, you got to stay away from these, these clowns. You need something real. If you're really, you, you're tired of this BS that you're in, you need people who are ready to move. Not people who are ready to be on YouTube. This is why I don't show my face because I'm ready to move. I get the money in my hand. I'm moving. And I don't want anybody to see me because we don't need people trying to interrupt the situation. I'm not here to be famous. I'm here to get the job done. That's why you have to donate to me. Because when you donate to these people, you're just donating to their lifestyle. You're, do you're donating to a S-Class Mercedes Benz. And the parking uh, uh, expenses. And the expensive gas. That's what you're uh, donating to. A Mercedes Benz van. I mean, what do you need that for? Just because it's a Mercedes Benz. That's why you want it. 
if he ever did get that van, you should demand this man be around wherever the hell he's, he said he's going to be around the whole country. Then once he, if he got the van, he would say, man, gas costs money, fam. The travel from New York to Los Angeles costs money. <clears throat> Donate so we can keep us on the road, fam. You know how they do it, but they're never doing anything. And a lot of you become hypnotized, mesmerized, because you're used to these people talking and you're not expecting them to do anything because you keep thinking talking is doing. Talking is talking. When you're on the phone talking about going to work, you're not going to work, you're talking. But when you're in the process of going to work, you're on your way. You have to stop dealing with people who talk and deal with people who do. It does take money to do. But when you see these people, they've gotten money in their hands, but they haven't done a thing. Now, keep in mind, a lot of these people's donations come from their built-in Freemason fan base. That's another reason why a lot of these guys get hits is because they have uh, the Freemason fan base and they donate the money. Because I knew some and they talk about this brotherhood stuff, so they support everybody. That is the underlying situation here. Freemasonry. They're not here to help you. So, you know, they get the fake beast. Every time you turn around, it's non-stop non soap opera drama. You know, nothing could ever be cool. It's the same thing with Tommy Sotomayor. He has a daily soap opera. If he doesn't have any genuine beef, he scours the internet looking to start something, talking about somebody or, or what have you, uh, just so he can uh, have something, to, uh, some, some controversy. And this is what the uh, Sarnetta is doing now. This is, this is why he said, I agree with Tommy Sotomayor. Because he wants to shock people. And then idiots talk about, oh man, did you hear Sarnetta? He said he agreed with Tommy Sotomayor. Why do you repeat these things and talk about them? Why is it uh, uh, like the end of your world because of this? <laughs> I mean, come on. These people are nothing but hustlers. Again, when my videos are not ad sense approved because of the content think about what I say think about what they say and how they say it in the words that they use then you ask how is their shit uh, family friendly but mine is not because my shit is real that's why if it was fake it would be family friendly approved but mine is not like I always say the truth hurts the liars Liars never tell the truth. Now, another thing with these house of consciousness individuals. If you notice, most of them are not black Americans. Did you hear me? Most of them are not black Americans. Sonetta is a Dominican. Uh, Seville, I believe he might be a Jamaican. Sankofa is whatever the hell he is. Imam Bashir is whatever the hell he is. Uh, Brother Larry is married to Jamaican. He might be one himself. He says he's not. The Pills are from some uh, obscure island in the Caribbean. Uh, Polite is a goddamn African. Uh, Marcus, young Marcus, is a Haitian. Young Pharaoh might be a Haitian too. I forgot to put him in the mix. I know they're beefing too, but it's all an act. That's another one whose uh, uh, channel got uh, his numbers up because of being on Sarnetta and all that beef stuff. So that's a problem too. You have these people who are trying to speak for us and they're not us. This is why you have to study warfare. Once you study warfare, then you realize that the white man has always sent people in behind enemy lines. Black people don't know how to do that. I mean, you're messing with white women. 
So you can be behind enemy lines, but usually they, they come to your world. You don't really go to their world. <clears throat> if you went to their world, then that might be better for you to get an idea how to do things. But even if you did go into their world, you wouldn't report back here to us because we're not organized. <laughs> but they, their agents will report back to their people because they're organized. So you have these others speaking on our behalf. They need to speak on their behalf. When you see videos of Sarnetta buying, making purchases, he's going and putting money in the Dominicans' hands. His people. And a lot of black people these days are putting money in Dominicans' hands. Whether it's for the hair or barbershops. How can you allow these people to come in and take over services for, that are for you only? You have to be stupid. That's the only answer. Stupid or tricked. Dominicans speak Spanish. They call themselves Latinos. If they really wanted a business, their businesses should cater to these damn Mexicans that are around here now. But of course, they're not the same people as the Mexicans. That's why they can't do that. So instead, they come to your black ass and, and, and take your money. And you're dumb enough to give it to them. And if you're not giving it to the Dominicans, you act like you have to give it to the Jamaicans. And the Jamaicans don't like you either, just like the Dominicans. Eat Jamaican food like it's your goddamn cultural food. That's not your goddamn food. I don't give a damn if you like it or not. You can go home and make you some rice and peas on your damn so your own. Cheaper. But you act like you're, that's your cultural food that you have to uh, support these Jamaicans. And I, I was dealing with somebody who liked eating the Haitian food. And I, you know, I tried some pastry they had, and you know, I think it was their version of a beef patty. I wasn't feeling it too much. I was in Spring Valley, New York, someplace out there. I wasn't feeling that shit. But. This is how black people do, man. They like supporting others. You have to support yourself, man. Because when you support these others, these people take the money. They don't live around you. They go back to the suburbs with the white man. That's who they love. Their neighbors. They love thy neighbor. You're not their neighbor. They don't love you. Got to get it through your heads, man. Got to start separating yourselves from these others. Not in a hatred sense the way these Somalis are starting to do now because these Somalis are starting to get out of hand. You know, they're calling everybody else every name in the book and they're claiming to be a race and <laughs> they claim they look so good. And, I mean, it, it's getting crazy, man. That's their form of nationalism. It has to stop. I mean, if you love yourself, you don't have to hate others. That's why I don't advocate hating Jamaicans. Or hating Africans. I'm just saying you got to stop trying to share with these people because these people are your competition. They don't love you. They love the white man. You know, they want to take your place. They want they want to get you out of here. Uh, and this matter of fact, that's another reason, too. That they keep hiring for House of Consciousness, all this conscious stuff. This is why they keep hiring these um, others to speak on our behalf. Because if you look at the messages of a Tommy Sotomayor and Sadnetta, which he says is uh, Sutek's message, the in order for the black man to live, the Negro must die. And Tommy Sotomayor, what does he say? He says, niggas need to be exterminated. Who are niggers? Well, I guess the white man has trained them to believe that niggers are the kind of people like the House of Consciousness, but who are not talking about Egypt because that's that's who we're talking about. Criminals, drug addicts, and people who call people niggers and all that. Those are, those are the niggers. The people who didn't make the grade, the, the people who didn't finish school. Those are niggers. So... 
how are they going to say the Negro, in order for the black man to live, the Negro must die when they're the Negro? And I guess they're saying the only way you can come out of it is to become a Freemason. While Tommy Sotomayor says Negroes must die, niggers must die. Because I'm sure the white man is putting money into these people and he has convinced him or these Negroes to say these ghetto niggers have to die because they're holding black people back. Let's suppose the white man has done that because usually the white man puts his money where his mouth is. Let's say the white man is paying these uh, no good motherfuckers off. And suppose... You, you take everything in the media now because every time you turn around, there's always something about black people. I mean, it doesn't matter what channel you turn into, what website you're on, <laughs> what the subject matter is. It's black, black. I mean, it's so much black that I'm just so fed up with seeing black people. That's how much they're overdoing it. It's like, and it's always in a negative. Like, okay, everybody must hate these people. Meanwhile, they make you love the Mexican, the Hispanic. I told you with the NFL thing, they're making the Hispanics look good. Then, uh, I was supposed to do a video on it. I didn't get a chance, but I might do it in a minute. Uh, the Houston Texans, and it's Houston, keep that in mind, they were uh, making the news. The quarterback, Deshaun Watson, who looks like he's going to be a pretty good quarterback. And I knew something was up because they started hyping this man up without the usual black quarterback negatives. But I'll say all that talk when I do the video. But he gave away his game check, his week's uh, pay, which I don't know what his week's pay. I think it was around 30000 or something like that. Uh, when I heard he was giving it away without even looking at the article, clicking on it, I already knew they were going to be Mexicans. I already knew that because they're not going to allow him to do that to black people. And of course, they were Mexicans. I mean, they can't show these athletes doing this shit for black people, these black guys. And you know they told him to do that because he's a goddamn rookie. What the fuck, rookie? And he even said he came from poverty. So, what the, come on, you think he's going to get into the NFL, get these checks? And say, I'm going to give them to some goddamn Mexicans. You got to be out of your mind. But I'm sure that the, the owner or the NFL hit them off to make up that money. But that's what they always have them do. Try to make it look like they're uh, doing goodwill. Because they know these people are getting paid way more money than most of society. By design, of course. So they have to make it look like they care. Because if you came to a rookie... And said, hey, man, why don't you give away your uh, game check to these goddamn Mexicans? Uh, you know, the first thing he's going to be saying, hey, man, I got to practice, man. I ain't got time to talk about this right now. So, you know, this is what's going to happen. But this is what they do, man. And, uh, you know, this, 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 this is why I believe the white man is paying these guys off. Giving them stipends. To talk about us, to shit on us. Now, again, I say this. They're making Mexicans look good. Making us look bad. I was just watching a movie, a TV show today, Police Woman from the 70s. I know that Smokey Robinson was in the episode. He, his acting wasn't half bad. Man. I don't know why he didn't get more roles. But uh, maybe he did and I didn't see him. But um, he played a drug addict, of course, and a, and a, and a drug dealer. And the white man was in control, of course. But um, he was a former athlete as well. <laughs> so that's what I noticed, man. Throughout the ages, we're always athletes and criminals, pimps, hoes, slaves. This is what we are. And this is the image that they give us. So why would a Tommy Sotomayor or a keep talking about this Negro stuff, this nigger stuff? And you see a lot of comments on... Um, Websites when white people make the comments or alleged white people, they say, "Oh man, if these niggers were gone, everything would be a whole lot better." Sounds like they might be thinking about doing that. I mean, cameras are everywhere, so they can monitor things. Uh, they want to take away the guns. 
all this kind of stuff. I'm starting to think that they might be thinking about this. Mexicans and being maneuvered into black areas all the time. And what if they did say, uh, and the fake police shootings too, you know, that might help to desensitize and prepare people's minds for when the real thing starts happening. Now, suppose they did go around in the ghettos and start exterminating niggers, so to speak. Let's suppose they did that. Do other niggers like Sonetta and Tommy Sotomayor, do you, do you think they're going to be off the hook? Or do you think the white man is going to say, yeah, round that black ass is up too? And then Tommy and Sonetta might say, hey, man, what's up with this, man? I, I was supposed to do my part. Well, you did your part, nigger. Now you're going down with the rest of your people. So that's why you can't go against your people. Because no matter what, you are going to be a target. Your ass is going to go down too. That's why I always bring up Count Dooku in Star Wars. He was down with the Emperor. The Emperor had his plans. Count Dooku said, I'm going to be down with this plan. And I'm going to get the just reward once it's all done. But Count Dooku didn't realize he wasn't really the top man for the job. So <laughs> once it was time for Count Dooku's ass to be uh, expendable, he got killed. And he, you can see in the movie, he was kind of shocked. In case you don't know what movie that was, that was The Revenge of the Sith. You can see that he was shocked when uh, the Emperor said, kill him. Because he was like, "My motherfucker, I did all this shit for you. <laughs> and I'm going to die right now. This is what Uncle Tom house niggers and agents. This is their position. They're being used, but see, they don't mind being used because they're benefiting at the moment. Once the plan is set in, in place, set in motion, and then your ass is, uh, is, is a part of the plan to be killed. Then what? You did it all for nothing. And now the Mexicans can take up the slack and uh, they're going to be on their own. They're going to be having some problems if they have to be on their own. But they'll take up the slack and then um, they'll get everything that our people work for. All because of coon agents. Most of whom are not even black Americans. That's the worst part about it. How come Sarnetta is not doing things on his Dominicans. I know he did a few videos here, here and there saying, how, how come you people, uh, how come you people aren't black? I don't want to admit that you're black. If you know they're not black, then you should uh, bang on them. Or if they don't want to admit they're black, bang on them. So, you know, this is the problem I have with these people. So obviously they're agents. And like I said, the, the 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 main way of finding out if people are agents is look at, just look at them. Jail, drugs, low education, high school dropout. That says it all. Because they they go through the system like a Zaza Ali as well. But see, she can get over it because she's a nice looking woman. They go through the system. They get turned out. Then they come back uh, under the assumed name, uh, and they all try to act like they're some mystical, mystical, uh, peaceful guru, guru of love, or something like that, you know. And uh, yeah, I was once wild. Now I'm at peace with myself and the earth. This is what these people are all about. So watch them. The coon agents, uh, and, and it's a damn shame because. Um, we need more than this, man. We need real people. And someone like me, I'm real. But I need the donations to make it happen. So I won't get donations or what I need. If I can get 8,000 easy like that, 10,000 easy like that, 100,000 easy like that, I can start moving and motivating right now. You know, travel expenses, I would meet up with people. But I just wouldn't do it on camera. See, people who do things on camera and in front of a mic at all times. That's another dead giveaway. Tommy Sotomayor, Sonetta, 
What do they do all the time? They go live because that's money. And they get the donations when they go live. They go live all the time. Everything that's going down is in front of a camera or a microphone, which lets you know right off that it's phony. If it's real, you're not filming it. If it's real, you're not recording it. Every little move. You're not doing that. If you have a beef with somebody, you're not going to take the time to set up the camera. <laughs> then go live and say, yeah, man, I'm tired of this motherfucker. He set me up. Poppy, got to be lying. You're at night on Harlem, New York streets. And you're trying to tell me you can spot a motherfucker across the street. He said a thousand people and cops on every corner. You can spot one man you know across the street, then another street. You can spot another man you know. I find that impossible. I got some pretty good eyesight, but I find that fucking impossible. At night, on top of that, with the people moving. With the cars moving. With the buses going past. With the, uh, the tour buses going past that are even higher. I find that impossible. I think Poppy is lying. His story is I thought he was lying about the being bothered thing himself, though. But we got to stop for this drama. You know, this, this is what we have to stop. I know people like the drama. Don't get me wrong. I guess it is dramatic, but that's all it is. It's an act. It's not real. If you want real, you got my link down there where you can donate. And you can see some real stuff once I get enough money up. These guys, they get the money. They're buying Gators, S-Classes, and a whole bunch of nonsense. Nigga nonsense. That's what they're buying. Nigga nonsense. So, I thought this was going to be a two-hour extravaganza. I think when I did the Louis Farrakhan one, I'm going to try and get that one out fast. Even though I've been thinking about it for the last few weeks. But, I'm going to try and get that one out before the man passes away. So nobody can say, oh, you're talking about a dead man. I'm not talking about a dead man. I'm talking about a coon. Doesn't matter if the coon is dead or alive. Once I lay down this shit, I'm going to try and go into more detail. I'm telling you, once I lay down this Farrakhan thing, only his brainwashed minions and fellow coon agents will say Farrakhan is the truth. Once I lay it down, you're going to realize Farrakhan is a coon agent and possibly the worst Uncle Tom house nigga in the history of the United States of America. And he's also a Jamaican and a Caribbean. He claims to be a mulatto as well. But if his mother is from St. Kitts and his father is from Jake, Jamaica, I know they have uh, white Jamaicans. I saw a picture of his mother. His mother is dark, which he always said. Yeah, my mother's dark, dark, dark. The nigga never showed a picture of his mother, his father. I'm going to hunt that shit down if I can. But until then, I think I made my case for this one. These guys are coon agents. And if their ratings are going down, I know their money is good. Because they haven't really taught us a damn thing anyways. All the only thing they ever taught us, or you guys who followed them, was about Egypt and these debates. Debates against people that you know when you already know the outcome. And debating about things that are pointless and useless to your entire existence. Why debate about Hebrews or Egyptian or Kemet? After the debate is over, how does that change your life? During the debate, how does it change your life? Because before the debate begins, you're not dealing with actual Hebrews. Even though they make a pretty decent case for their position. You damn sure aren't dealing with actual Egyptians. Which is what I say. <laughs> Those are the people who you need to uh, go and teach the shit to. I mean, that's the, those are the ones who's going to have the best effect on people in Egypt and Sudan. Teach them uh, the ways of their ancestors. Because other than that, you're not really making any headway. 
people in the United States, unfortunately, too many black people are consumed with drugs. So they don't have time to be getting into this other shit. And I think a lot of them get interested in Egypt because if they talk about themselves, it's probably not as exciting and they're looking at it as a daunting task. You know, to the to clean this up. You have to keep in mind, uh, the white man has uh, allowed others to succeed above and beyond our, our own accomplishments because it keeps the pressure on us. It keeps the doubt in our mind about ourselves. That is what it's all about. And since these Caribbeans, these Africans aren't helping us out, stay away from them. Why? Because you don't want people knowing what you're all about, how you uh, motivate, how you operate. You don't want them to know these things because they like the Jamaicans, they use it against you. That's why you have to leave them alone. You don't have to hate them. Just leave them alone. Just like they won't invite you over to your house and tell you about their whole everything that's going on with them. Why should you volunteer information to these people? Black people also have a, a, a habit of volunteering information to white people as well because white people are pretty nosy i mean they'll come up to you <laughs> they'll ask you oh, oh what you doing man oh where do you work at they don't even have they don't even know you i get that all the time oh so what do you do for a living man and then you have to learn to not just fall for the direct question a lot of black people think that they have to answer questions that white people ask you you don't have to answer a damn thing you don't have to be mean. You can just say, change the topic. That's all. And sometimes if you say, hey, what do you do? The funny part is they'll actually tell you. They might be lying, but they'll tell you. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. That's nice. And then uh, you keep asking them questions about what they do to try and get out of a uh, <laughs> town on what, what you do. But some of them get nosy and then they might ask again. So what do you do again, man? You can say, I chill. That's what you can say. <laughs> uh, I mean, you don't have to tell them shit, especially if you don't know them. You're not going to see them again. Why tell people your business? I mean, come on. So this is the same thing with the uh, Caribbeans and the Africans. Don't, don't tell them anything. Everybody's trying to gauge what black Americans do, black Americans' success, to see if the stereotypes are what they are. Notice how we're the only ones who get stereotyped in this country in a bad way. Practically everybody else, they always praise something good about them. The Mexicans, they say they're hard workers. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, just, they're coming here to feed their families, to get an education. But motherfucker, they got their own country. The fuck they got to do it here? They can do it in their own country. Nobody ever says that. How, how come they can't do that in their own country? I mean, is, is Mexico uncivilized or something? I guess that's what the so-called drug murders are supposed to be about, to conv convince people that, hey... Mexico's so dangerous, let the nice people come here. <clears throat> Doesn't make any sense. It's a bunch of lies, but, you know, it is what it is. You know what I mean? So, with that, I'm definitely uh, out on this one.